All right, guys, welcome to another episode. Today, we're going to be talking about a message that I got sent uh, by a follower. This also happens to be a friend of mine, somebody I know, and I'm going to keep I'm going to keep her identity to myself, but the message is still very, very relevant. So I'm going to tell you what the message is. And it's something that you're going to probably find annoying or you might find it very relatable. So let's get right into it. So the message is the following. This is a real life. This is a real life uh, thing, something that happened, didn't happen directly to her. But it happened um, sort of to the people in her circle. So here is what it reads. I have to tell you about an incident that happened with a quote-unquote guard dog yesterday. And she here proceeds to name this person that she knows who ran a medical call where a woman suffered dog bites. And she continues and she goes, that was a horrific understatement. I guess they normally keep this dog locked up. And this lady came over to the house to do ministry work. So some sort of church related activity. So the dog got out, shot past the owner, grabbed the woman by her tricep. Uh, And, of course, one of the owners tried to pull the dog off. And it completely, the dog completely ripped her tricep off. The dog, I'm going to read that again. The dog completely ripped her tricep off. Then the dog lunged again, and the woman turned to the other side. Obviously, she's now in survival mode, so she trying to turn away from the dog and the same thing kept happening so then she goes you know it stayed dragging her under their trailer i'm not sure what she means you know i don't know if if she means that the 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 house was the trailer like a camper uh or if they just had a different trailer but that's irrelevant right just imagine any trailer the dog proceeded to drag her under the trailer. Now, I'm going to remind you, this was a quote-unquote guard dog. Okay, she had bite wounds on her head, her neck, both breasts, and the dog took a huge chunk out of her stomach and thigh. One of the bite marks on her thigh, okay, she says, I've never seen something like that before. And I've been bitten tons of times. This person who sent me the message is a dog trainer. Okay, it's, it's a perfect mold of the teeth, punctures, um, you know, the whole thing. My question is, could you have choked the dog out like this? You know, what would you have done, basically? So I'm going to go over, over that message. That's horrible that this happened to this poor lady. And it's horrible when it happens to anybody. I recently made a video on that topic regarding to something that happened last year, late last year. I think it happened in December in Dallas. Some lady was pet sitting. She went to the house that she had done business in before. And when she went in, the two dogs that she had experienced with, she knew, just ripped her face apart, literally ripped like ripped her lips out of her face, ripped, ripped her nose out of her face, bit her ear off, all right, so I made a video on that, and I and it, you can find it on YouTube. If you're watching this on YouTube, I'll put the link to that video so you can look into that if you want to. And I basically talk about how, hey, when you work with dogs, you always have to be aware that this is a possibility. But here's the thing. This lady, in this case, this lady doesn't work with dogs. So... Now we have a a different, slightly different point of view here. Okay, if you work with dogs, whether you are aware of the dangers or not, you have to realize if you get bit, you shouldn't be surprised, as horrible as that sounds. But if if I get bit and if I get a really bad bite, 
that wouldn't be a surprise, right? It'd just be like, well, you know, I got bit really bad. Well, what do I, what do I do for a living? I work with dogs. Okay, that makes sense. But this lady who doesn't work with dogs, she just went to the house. This dog was out of control and just completely changed the life of this person who had no, probably no intention of ever working with dogs. Not only that, but she went there to do ministry work. She went there to probably do something good. And this horrific thing happens. Her life will never be the same. The dog took a chunk out of her thigh, took a chunk out of her stomach, ripped her tricep clean off her arm. And this woman never even signed up to be a dog trainer or work with dogs in general. Obviously, it's horrible that something like that has to happen, uh, that it had to happen. Now, be aware, if, if this had happened to this lady and there was nobody around, this woman could have died. Okay, This dog could have killed this person. And it's awful to even think about that. Regardless of how ineffective the owners were at, at taking this dog away from this woman, at least they were there. If they hadn't been there, there's really no telling what could have happened. I mean, the moment you lose mobility in one of your arms, and, and believe me, if you lose your tricep, your mobility is tremendously affected. Now you only have like half of your body to, you know, try to fend this dog off, right? And all of, you know, the, the additional bites that happen afterwards, this is just terrible. And I feel awful for this lady. But then we go and look at this as how irresponsible, just how tremendously irresponsible to have a quote-unquote guard dog. It's terrible. Everybody thinks they know their dog. I don't even know my dogs. Right? The moment I tell anybody, he will not bite you. When I hear myself say that, I immediately correct myself. Even if, I, if I'm talking about my young dog, because I can't, I can't tell you with 100% accuracy that that's the case, that that's going to be the case. And I'm a dog trainer. I work with dogs. I've been working with dogs for a long time, and I still don't go around saying, this dog will not bite you. Okay? So you look at then the, your average pet owner, Okay, which your your person who owns a, a guard dog, a quote unquote guard dog, make no mistake, that's an average pet owner. It just so happens, I don't know what the situation is. It just so happens that some of these people that have guard dogs, right, protection dogs, they're just average pet owners who can afford a more expensive dog. I don't know the circumstances. I don't know if they trained the dog, if they got the dog first, then they got it trained. I don't know if they bought it trained. Who knows? That's obviously, you know, kind of irrelevant at this point. I don't know the details. I don't need to hypothesize what happened there. That's just awful that that happened to this poor lady. And it's irresponsible of the owners to have this type of dog. If you have a guard dog that you have to lock up, because your guard dog is being, quote-unquote, too protective, you don't have a guard dog. You have a liability. And you need to do something about that. I don't care what you do about that. I don't care if it is frowned upon for you to consider putting that dog down. I really do not care. Right? These bullshit lines like, oh, all dogs can be saved, uh, no bad dogs, does that cute saying that did that cute saying save this woman's tricep? No, it didn't. So I don't care how cute or how horrible it sounds for me to say this dog was obviously too much for this family. This dog should have been put down. I make no apologies for saying that. Okay? I like dogs enough to to make it sort of the center of of my livelihood, of my of my lifestyle. But even then, I can honestly look at situations like this and say, this dog should have been put down. 
These owners were clearly way over their heads. Or maybe maybe they got ripped off. Who knows? I, I, I don't know. I don't know what went into that. I doubt this woman that was going in there to do ministry work, I doubt she had a a blade on her. I doubt she she went in with her shotgun aiming at, at these people. I, I highly doubt that was the case. This was definitely not a protection scenario. This was a dog that had no, no control on this dog, and this dog did something that will now forever, it forever has changed the life of this person. Not only this person, but her family, her friends. Her whole life has changed. So no, no cute sayings. This dog should have been put down. Okay? The, you know, all dogs can be saved. No dog should be put down. No bad dogs. Bullshit. You tell that woman that. Go to that woman without her tricep and tell her, hey, that dog is not bad. You know, hey, that, you know, that, that's not the dog's fault. You tell her that. Obviously, you know, there are dogs that should not be in anybody's hands. And then some people will say, oh, you know, that dog would do great with somebody else. Okay, who's somebody else? Are you going to get the dog? That's another thing that I hear too. Oh, this dog would do great with a dog trainer. Okay, I'm a dog trainer. I don't want those dogs. How many dog trainers that can handle this type of dog, that have the ability to handle these dogs? How many of these dogs want these project dogs? Not many. The people who typically want these dogs as like project dogs, these are typically people that they want to get more experience. And, and good for them. Okay, hopefully it's a good match for them. But I've also known dog trainers, okay, I've known dog trainers that go, oh, you know, I like the aggressive ones. And they themselves can't even handle those aggressive dogs because I've seen them. I've seen their dogs. They're like, oh, you know, I, I just, I like the, the reactive dogs. You're a dog trainer and your dog's still reactive. Which, I mean, if it's a, if it's a learning experience and a journey for you, Good for you. That's awesome. You know, at least you're giving that dog a suitable home, and you're learning from that experience, and that's great. But going back to a dog like this, that dog has a lead deficiency, if you catch my drift. Okay? So now the question was, what what would you do in that scenario? And I told her, well, you know, basically, could you choke the dog off? Yeah, that that would be the best. And I've been in scenarios like this where I was not on the receiving end, but I was on the, you know, and, I, and I've talked about this in, a, in other episodes, but I have been on the end of having to pull a dog away from somebody. I'm, and I'm briefly going to tell you, this was while I was in Afghanistan, working with this gnarly ass dog. We had this one dog that was super, super gnarly, very powerful, powerful, big ass Malinois. And um, we're doing a scent detection certification. And the dog had to give a passive response, meaning when the dog alerts, when he finds the odor, the dog has to sit or lay down. That's a passive response. It's a certification. So what the dog does in this instance right when this is happening the dog instead of giving a passive response the dog gives a, an active response which is the dog scratches so right away the guy failed the certification so uh, my supervisor called him off and he said hey you know you failed pull your dog out the, the handler was super frustrated pulled the dog away the dog was so pissed that he didn't get paid the handler wasn't even unfair to the dog it's not like the handler kicked the dog or hung the dog wasn't like that the the handler just simply pulled the dog away the very fact that this dog didn't get paid didn't get rewarded for what the dog believed i did my job give, give me the ball right that triggered this this just rush of violence and this dog grabbed the the handler's calf pinned him to the ground 
took a matter of seconds. This guy passed out immediately. My supervisor froze. Okay, he froze. He's been he had been doing this way longer than me. Fro completely froze. I even froze. I had to snap myself out of it right away. Dropped my my uh, my clipboard. I ran to the guy. I'm not even thinking. Well, what the hell's gonna happen, right? So I, I grabbed the dog, and uh, you know, obviously we're not right on top of him. We're not. We're not close to the guy when this is happening. So I have to run to the guy as this guy's getting pinned on the ground by his own dog. And and the the dog is, I mean, he has a full, full grip. And he's, uh, it took a matter of seconds. The guy passed out, turned all white, grabbed the dog's collar. He f thankfully had a flat collar. I twisted it and I just turned and I just waited the dog out. Because that's what happens when something like this happens. You start pulling the dog, you're potentially causing more damage because now the dog wants to bite it even more. So what I do is I grab the flat collar, I twist it, and I hold it, wait for the dog to release on his own. And when the dog released, I had this moment of, oh, my God, what's going to happen now? Fortunately, by then, my supervisor has snapped out of it, grabbed the dog. And by the time you know I went to the guy, he was unconscious he was completely passed out this is an instance in which had nobody been there this dog could have killed that handler people have no idea what dogs are capable of it baffles me yeah your average pet owner doesn't know that um and fortunately your average dog doesn't know their capability but uh i mean so i've been in a similar situation so the best way to do is yes grab the collar and try to restrict oxygen the best way that you can uh, this is whether a dog is pinning another person on the ground or whether the dog is pinning another dog. Anything. If the dog is naked, doesn't have a collar, grab your belt. Run it through while this is happening and quickly just hold. And hold it until the dog just stops breathing and pull the dog away. I don't care if that looks bad. I don't care if that's politically correct, if that's palatable. I don't care because at that moment, this dog is causing a tremendous amount of damage to another human being a tremendous amount of damage and pain to another human being at that point fuck the dog that dog will need to get choked out okay and if that's not working i don't have anything and uh i'm sorry i will do whatever the fuck it takes to get the dog away from that person whatever and i will disregard the safety of that dog for the sake of that person and i would hope that if if you know, if I ever was in that position, that somebody would do the same. At that point, there is no time to go. Oh, but that's not humane. Fuck humane. You gotta get that dog out. You have to relieve the tension, the pressure, and the violence, so that you can preserve this person. So that's what I wanted to go over in the on on this episode. And it is terrible. You know, I don't like to talk about this kind of stuff. It's you know, it's 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 a very aggravating topic, you know. And yes, at the end of the day, you could look at the dog and go, well, you know, it's not the dog's fault. Yes, that dog had a lot of pent-up energy. I have clients that are like, I have, client, I have a client right now that, uh, you know, sh she's been told by a handful of people, you got to put the dog down. And it's it's not because they don't like dogs. It's because this dog has a, has a bite history and it's a pretty gnarly dog. It's It's bit the owner. And, you know, when I got the heads up, it's like, hey, just so you know, this person's coming to you. But this person, this dog has bit these, these many people, has bit the owner. The owner's afraid of the dog. And I'm thinking, oh, shit, like maybe, you know, I'm going to do the consultation. And maybe, you know, I might have to say the same thing. I don't know how gnarly this dog is. But I started working with the owner and the dog. We're doing this through private lessons, which in my opinion is the best way to address this. And... And we're talking about all the things that, that the dog is lacking, right? Now, this dog has not caused the the level of damage that um, that I talked about a moment ago. But I believe, you know, it's because the dog hasn't figured it out yet. And I don't think the dog is too far gone. Getting to know the owner, getting to know the dog, and having worked with them already for, um, you know, for now maybe like a week or two. You know, I can I can tell you that there is hope. There is a light at the end of the tunnel, and the owner is aware of the owner is seeing this. As, as I started to dissect what was happening here, we realized, you know, this is a powerful dog. It's a working dog. He doesn't have an outlet. 
He doesn't have structure. He doesn't have leadership. And I'm not talking about being the alpha male or anything like that. I'm just talking there is no structure in the house. There is no sense of hierarchy. And you cannot have that with a powerful dog. right? And on top of that, again, the dog doesn't have a job. So we started to tweak a couple of things. And obviously, I went into a lot more detail with the owner. And in a way that it made sense, the owner now, I mean, just after not too long of a, of a period of time of working with them and checking in on them, uh, the dog is making progress. And it's all things that make sense to the owner. So, yes, we could say that at the end of the day, that dog that tore that woman's tricep off her arm Yes, we could say, yes, it wasn't that dog's fault. That dog definitely needed a lot of structure, right? Needed a lot of structure, probably needed a job. But unfortunately, when improper matching happens, somebody's going to pay the price. A lot of times, it's the dog that pays, and sometimes it's somebody else who pays the price. All right, guys. Make sure you uh, make sure you follow the podcast. Go to uh, drmismypassion dot com. Check out the online course. If you want to work with me, book some training with me. Send me a message, and we can work together. Uh, follow us on social media: Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Again, doctoring is my passion, and your favorite podcast platform. I'll see you guys in the next episode.